you're playing an Alk or an Agasaren, the other team knows where your focus is going to have to be. Mm. It's like putting a big bullseye on part of the map. So the enemy team is like, well, we know that they're going to have to come and deal with this, so we can slightly predict their more chaotic move. They have to deal with this, so that's where they're going to be. If you spread things out and you can say, we're going to hit anywhere, and we can we can attack at any time, flank and movers, uh, maneuvers and stuff like that, just like Winter said, they're so good at that. So I think they don't want to give them those Alka, Nagasar, and Heroes so that they can play that more chaotic style. And here we go. Well, here comes the draft. Out. Okay, I was going to say, is the Whisk going to get go. banned? We have to make sure the Whisk gets banned versus Ed Finham as well, because not only do they run it, the, the Bounty Hunter incredibly well, when they play these heroes that just benefit their lanes in such an intense manner, they've kind of run away with it. So, yeah. Whisk banned out for OG. Let's see if they look to ban that Nyx Assassin like we were talking about, since Skylark had such devastating performances on it. IO is their most played hero as a squad. Yeah, it's uh, it's Spartan that, uh, that plays that, and he is so aggressive on that. Normally you see, you know, it's IO helping out here and there, helping out in the lanes. No, he is all around. He is all over the place. It is really interesting to see how the, the two support duos work in that regard because on one side you got MNT and Spartan who basically play their own game and are all across the map on different portions and making their own uh, or applying their own pressure. Uh, on the side of OG, it may be a little bit more predictable where you know that Fly is going to be not roaming around as much as uh, Spartan and MNT is. Sure, Jerex is going to be all over the place. We're going to expect that. Uh, and uh, we see an opening with a Luna Warlock. Just as we kind of expected, the way OG's been approaching their games, heavy team fight, group up, death ball kind of strategy. These two picks indicate that intensely right away. Might we see Rubik here, do you think, from Adfinum? Or is, is that does that work, Shadow Demon and Rubik? I think it's a little bit redundant kind of in a way, and I think that I mean, they, they still might be able to, but I don't think that they're going to do it first two. So nice. Clockwork picked up, very good at isolating the Luna. We saw S4's for, S performance earlier against Arteezy's Luna. He pretty much just ran at him the entire game and made yeah. it really difficult for him. It also puts a lot of pressure in the laning phase on the supports to be uh, to stay in the lane. Who that's was, just who the was kind of way it, the Clockwork who works. Who was playing at Fred Finn when he ran against Zhao 8's Enigma? And just, that was MNT. That was MNT. Yeah. Just when it, they just said, you just go in the jungle and just mess with him. And yeah. that's what he did. Yeah, it's, Clockwork's a hero that we all, we've all we been mentioning like multiple times. Like When you're playing with... Uh, very farm heavy cores. He's a hero that doesn't really uh, require much farm and he forces the supports to stay in the enemy lane. So they already know, like, we have to, you know, we're going to keep the, uh, the warlock, we're going to keep somebody else just down there. Maybe try to prevent Jerex's roaming, which we haven't seen them mm. excel at. That's pretty much when OG plays the best, is when Jerex is able to run around and make stuff happen on the map. Okay, so we know that OG is going in for the push and going in for the team fight. They've got two heroes that are really that are strong in lane, and that have that team fight yes. uh, combination going. So what is that Finn going to do? Because they don't have any like okay, Clockwork is a little bit a team fight, but not as much as them. So what what hero do you look forward to seeing from them to kind of make up for that? They like to do this draft style there where they don't give too much away early on. Like yeah. we see that quite often. If they pick first, they often take Rubik if they can. And mm. they just try and sort of say, oh, well, we'll leave it up to you guys. You guys pick and then we'll show you what we're picking late. I mean, like the late Enigma pick and stuff. They, they don't mind that at all. Interestingly enough, OG's mm. bands are quite genuinely the three most played heroes for the Greek squad. <laughs> They've literally mm. dealt like them. That's 60, what they've 60, <laughs> seriously, 66 matches on IO, 62 on Darkseer, and 50 on Batrider. Those are the three. In that order. At Finham actually removed the Nyx Assassin themselves. Does that mean that we're going to see Skylark Clockwork? Because he's otherwise, we will be running out of options here. We'll it's see. It's definitely possible. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I think it's more than likely going to be a uh, Clockwork core, not mm -hmm. a support in this game. But we'll see how they decide to go for that. OG banning out the sniper too. We've been seeing At Finham just pick snipers a lot, not even really needing it be to be in a, like a specific matchup versus an OD. Just Pug's been really preferring the hero, and it's a lane dominator. I'd feel I'm taking away Nyx. Yeah. That is, I mean, we just co were complimenting their prowess on it. Yeah, with a uh, Skylark already probably set for that clock, they uh, they just don't want to play against it as well, which is uh, fair enough. S4 can play a mean Nyx assassin as well. So let's see what they got in store for each other. We have got one more ban coming out for Ad Finum. Is there any support that you want to remove? We already know like Fly is normally the one playing the Warlock, with Jerex maybe a little bit more of an aggressive support. Yeah. But Slardar is still in the pool and it is so scary on OG. Yep, agreed. 
Usually the Slaughter is paired with the Darkseer, but yeah, Slaughter, they've had pretty good uh, success with it. I think the Ogre Magi is probably the more obvious one that Jarex has been playing just to mm -hmm. like run around and obviously amplifies the Luna with, with Bloodlust at all times. You can even, you know, Bloodlust the Bloodlust the Golem too, but you don't really see that <laughs> yes, too much. Yes, it is better. I, I actually saw that. Yes, that looks a lot more like uh, Samuel's hair. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> they corrected it. They corrected it indeed. What, what, what do you think they're thinking about here? The, the Ogre Magi ban? If it, that's, no, it's the Slider. Slider. Good it's call. Slider yeah. Very good call, Sheeps. Well, it, it wasn't that obvious, apparently, if at Fidham took uh, that long of a time a to think that about time, that. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah, they got plenty. Yeah. <laughs> they can use some of OG's time, perhaps, if they take the time to think about they are going for next. I think it's a. I mean, it's a good band. Like we mentioned, Edfinan mm. wants to do scrappy fights, scrappy engagement. Slaughter is like the king of scrappy engagement, mm. scra scrappy fights with such low cooldown on his stun, as well as amplified damage in the team fights to enhance your Luna. Got two strong laners already. Would you be surprised to see perhaps something like a, a Chen or even an Enigma coming out of this for OG? Um, I haven't really seen them go for anything along those lines, so I wouldn't really uh, expect it, but it, it is an enabler for like five manning, so it's maybe a possibility. Not likely based off their recent trends. Okay, what needs to happen for Advinum to go for the Enigma? Because we saw okay. that earlier. I think that was just an, I think that was just an incredible Enigma game. Like that yeah. last pickup was like outstanding. So, okay, OD is a hero that we saw versus the Clockwork before from uh, EG playing the Clockwork, and we saw this OD just kind of standing in the front line, even if he got hooked, he just adds to himself, buy time for his team to get there before it ends. And yeah, it's it's just a really good pickup as well versus Shadow Team to clear the illusions. Oh. Finum, the only team pretty much to ever pick the puck. He's back. Love this hero. Very good at team fighting. Very good at being able to uh, deal with that group up measure that OG does like to do, so if they are in a position during that, and he's able to get into the back lines on top of the Warlock if they like, mess up the initiations. Yeah, it's good Skylar at surprising Puck. the crap out of people yes. too. Puck and Clock. And as we've also mentioned multiple times, just to reiterate for like people who didn't get to watch too much, like uh, these Lunas and these ODs, they don't build BKB. They wait till like 40 minutes, super late game to build this. Puck mm. is pure magic damage. We also see Thug always go for yeah. this Dagon build. He even has Soul Catcher on top of it to be able to just burst the heroes down. So it's a very interesting pickup for Adfinum and something that they do like to run. But well, it doesn't need a Thug Puck yet. Yeah. 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 Just, just while we're on the topic of Puck, let's not forget, they got Xiao Ei's team, LFY, to ban Puck. Yeah. yeah. And I see your face. I'll let you jump in, Ted. Drow! Drow! We've got Earth Spirit. This is already setting up the people. We're gonna hack up a game, Alex. Yeah, Earth Spirit. Uh, more. I mean, look at OG's lineup. It's pretty much what we discussed the entire time before the draft team started. Team fight, team fight, team fight. Run at you as soon as they hit level six. Take buildings, force objectives. Add Finum though, reacting with the Drow Ranger. Very good versus the OD because of the silence. You can always prevent him from using Arcane Orb in, in uh, scrappy fights. And Lane Dominator. This also enables your puck to do better in the matchup versus mid. Helps pretty much everything that they need inside that laning phase. Okay, so last picks. What are, what are the teams lacking right now? Because we already got our mid match upset. Stuns are light on both teams. On both teams, um, yeah. You've only got Warlock Ult, Lucent Beam, uh, Earth Spirit, I guess. But it's not like the reliable click hero stun like, uh, well, gosh, Weaver. Ooh. Okay, so they're going for the support. Weaver and this but, yeah, support that might Weaver. Be the the yeah. Lil style, the this Lethal, might be the support as Weaver. Slacks calls it. But yeah, that is an interesting one. Or is it going to be an offlane Weaver and support Clock with Shadow Demon? Like we've seen, uh, they like to have a roaming support. I wonder mm -hmm. if they'll do something like that with Clockwork, maybe. I think it's it's still open, but I think the I like I think MNT likes to play those type of heroes that scale. We saw his Marana scale intensely Oof. yesterday, so Ooh. I think that I think we might see the support weaver for Edfinum. Yeah, I, it looks weaver. it looks cool to it. Uh, scales gives him more scaling potential as well, and gives him that type more rush potential with the Drow Ranger and with the uh, with the bugs. But would it be played in the same way? Would it get as big as Lil and his Weaver? I think so. They, yeah. they I mean, they usually uh, prefer giving MNT a lot of farm, except for when Spartan's playing the yeah. Enigma, obviously. I mean, all you're gonna do is just be on the map with Drow. Yeah. Like that's it. That's how you get this Weaver to be this dangerous thing. Yeah. Is you're just like, oh, there's Drow on the map. So. And hope that nobody stays as, is uh, close to you. Yeah, that's it. They that's get it. Drow Weaver. So what's the S4 hero? S4 hero. One more left. 
We've seen some crazy stuff from S4. They banned Nature's Prophet, by the way, OG. Yeah, they, they were expecting that clock to be support. Yeah, I was not expecting uh, Nature's Prophet, but obviously maybe it, they... It, I mean, if you read Dota buff, Skylark has made an awful lot of Nature's Prophet. Do you think that's it? I hope well, just is that Dota seriously buff? what OG have done? I, 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 I hope that's not the case, but he does. He used to play a lot of Nature's Prophet. Te teams do use that kind of stuff oh, of course, to go yeah. and look, because, I mean, you know, what else can you really do? Well, or, but... or perhaps they scrambled, like, wait, who are we playing in the Grand Finals <laughs> against? <laughs> who? Who? who were OG's these guys? Time. Oh, okay. Legion Commander. More illusion clear. Uh, it's able to remove the silences off of the OD as well if he does. And like we mentioned, they don't like to get BKB, so he's able to. If he's able to do that, it's cool. And they can put a lot of pressure on the safe lane. Uh, and it's very good versus Drow Ranger just to get on top of him. Yeah. You know, you always want to be able to cancel the precision order for him. So Earth Spirit and Legion Commander are very good at being able to do that. And heavy team fight, and this gives them a little bit of a pickoff potential with that. So okay. Cool draft. A good draft to start the grand finals, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Both of them are very strong. So <laughs> let's do this. It is my great pleasure to start things off for the grand final of the Boston Major. The voices behind this grand final. There's an OD in game and there's an OD at the desk, and he's joined by a magical presence. It's Malini. Thank you very much, Alex. Indeed, we're here ready for the grand finals of the Boston Major. Best of five. Adfinim going up against OG. I'm Hyde Ben's Hyde. As you can see behind me, the crowd as well is going pretty insane. What a matchup we've got on our hands, Ben. Adfinim, a team that's just rose up incredibly quickly recently. Two years ago, I remember casting Spartan and Madara at a UK land. They came over, they decimated UK Dota. Now they're here on the verge of decimating international Dota up against OG in this matchup. What's going to happen, Ben? Talk to me about Adfinim. What is it about them that's allowed them to get this far and be at this point where they could be OG two-time winners of the majors? And look at Madara. Let's play some good dotes. And <laughs> as you mentioned before, the Alf Naga probably making uh, a lot of people happy. I think something special about Adfinum is that they have a lot of unique drafts. This one is no different. This drow puck combination is actually something that OG use quite often. And uh, of course, we see the support weaver from maybe next time. I'm gonna drop the ward down here, Adfinum. Both sides getting the vision, but immediately dewarded by OG. OG themselves not really with a good sort of a initiation there from the high ground, so they're holding off. Thug. Thinking about scouting it out again, has the, the orb up in a second, but both teams grouped up. Being very, very careful about who makes the jump. Oh, and MNT kind of dropping down the Blightstone there, saying, come at, come at me, bro. <laughs> and uh, it looks like <laughs> nothing is going to come out of this for now. Unless Spartan can get a disruption, but both teams just respecting each other by the looks of it. And uh, we'll head down to respective sides to pick up the bounty runes. Yeah, Drought Aura is strong at level 1, but Lunar Blessing is even stronger, especially when, that have, when they have that high ground positioning. And it looks like No-Tail may be positioning in the off lane up with Fly. So that'll be a little bit different. And it will be Skylark on the Clockwork, and maybe next time on the Weaver. Support, Clockwork might have not been the best this game, just because there's no jungler for them uh, to really deal with. It might be very hard for him to actually get kills and get experience. So having him as an offlaner, much more reliable in, getting, in terms of getting his level 6. I mean, because of this lane pairing, the way that they have gone about it, OG, uh, how is this laning stage going to go? Obviously, Adfinim have that Drow Aura advantage, uh, but do OG have the heroes to, to have the potential to come out on top in these early stages? I think the Puck's actually a pretty decent matchup against uh, the OD. Like, he can't really orb you down because you have Phase Shift, and of course, with the Drow Aura, he does actually have more base damage than the OD in this early phase. On top lane, Skylar taking a bit of a beating there from No Tail and Fly, bringing him down to, to half health or so, and even more, in fact, with his Shadow Word, Skylar. And to be careful, hanging back. So, no tail certainly getting the space thanks to fly for that CS to happen. Meanwhile, down bottom, Spartan, he's found S4 with the disruption. And then he comes across with the bugs. Now, they're going to be able to force S4 back underneath the tower and make sure that this lane is as hard as they can make it for the Legion Commander safe lane on his own. That's a very hard lane to kill. I think they need to address the Luna at some point. The Luna and the Warlock do have that pull open to them. This one's probably an unexpected lane by Adfinum, so they're not going to be able to ward out that uh, pull. And now Fly's able to perhaps get level 2 and onwards very easily. Yeah, Jarrett's trying to just make the side pull spot and trying to interrupt it. And at the moment, CS-wise, the mid lane 7 for 3 against the 7 for 1. Very close between Thug and Anna. And both safe lane cores getting similar amounts, 9 for 2. On the safe lane for the drought, I have Venom mid lane, and they're keeping the harassment up onto Thug, but as expected, as you said, with that aura and, and the fact that Puck can lane relatively well against the OD, seems to be going all right here for Thug. 
And he has that high ground ward. It's definitely not to be underestimated. And Thug does have an, a salve, so he is a salve up on Ana. Ana should be able to get his bottle, I think, in this creep wave, which shouldn't be that big of a deal for him. He does orb out. Jerex is coming in from behind. And this is going to be the puck without his escape mechanism roll forward. But he's got the face shift to dodge the slow. They'll come in with a boulder smash, Thug. Is he going to be all right? Looks like he will. Nice little face shift there. Dodging the initiation of Jerax. And even without that orb, Thug remaining alive and had that self ready to go. So back, back to full health. Jerax is going to continue to hang around though. And uh, try and get a bit more space for Anna to, to catch up. I mean, maybe try and get ahead and CS in this mid lane. Yeah, this Luna is still free farming in that top lane though. I'd be very concerned if I were at him. And Skylark is out of HP regeneration in that top lane. He's getting bullied out by fly and no tail he could potentially die over i mean yeah with this shadow word and lucid being skylark he's going to drop incredibly low he's, he's starting to come back in with a battery assault cogs down but it doesn't matter first blood there for og fly will take the kill no tail gets himself back to safety at the same time mid lane anna for a bit of a setup onto thug jarax trying to come in waits out the phase shift in the orb but proving to be a little too, too hard for the earth spirit to have the control to to bring down this puck a first blood for OG in that top lane, and as you said, certainly the lane where Abfinim are suffering the most. I mean, would you expect to see some sort of a rotation from, from some of the supports down bottom to go and help the clock? Yeah, I think the Weaver can uh, rotate up there. They only have one Sentry Ward on the Warlock. It wouldn't be that difficult for him to zone out. Maybe next time already moving uh, about. The Shadow Demon had already blown his TP score on the mid lane, so it would have been quite the trek Ooh. for him to go. And Jarrett, moving rather far out on this mid lane. But it really is a question of whether MNT can... And offer that much. He's level two. That's the bugs. They need him Shikuchi. to use Astral before they can make a move. And there is a DD on Ana, so he might be playing very aggressively. This might be the word go. And there's the Astral. MNT starting to shift forward a little bit. And he's now going to move forward. But again, just ducks back out. A TP across from Fly just to make sure that no ganks will be incoming onto Ana. Get the D ward as well. So OG reclaiming good control of this mid lane after already establishing a very strong top lane for Nota. Yeah, so I think bottom lane's kind of a wash, like LC is still getting good amounts of experience despite uh, them not being able to get a kill on him. And top lane, they're already reinforcing. They know that Warlock had just TP'd mid and they're walking back up there. Because that's the lane that you want to deal with. A solo Luna in the off lane this early in the game without Eclipse is your prime kill target. But they're wrapping around behind on Thug. Earth Spirit with a 1 1 1 build. He has to be able to get the roll into the silence. He's got to get the perfect, perfect timing here, Jarrax. A TP across will be there. Goes for the silence first into the stun and they're going to try and take him down. It's five. He's there with the disruptions, though. He off. He face shifts. He's out. The right clicks will do it, though. Anna finishes off Buck in the mid lane. Spotted trying to punish Anna's play, but Anna pulls up and he's even thinking about turning around it with the DD. He goes for Spot. That's five. Gets the final touch. And Anna playing a little too aggressively for his own good there. Throws away his life. He maybe expected some support from Jerax in the river over there, but he wasn't able to bottle oh. up to safety. Well, whilst that was happening, will the action down mid for him to try and eye up No Tail? And no Tail proving to be a little too tanky. He's got a few too many levels under the belt for the two of them to take out unless he's massively out of position. Two for one at the moment, as you said, lane wise, No Tail's Luna having a great time, but still the drought down at the bottom, 32 CS at the moment. Yeah, I guess by the same token, Draw Rangers are farming up there. And yeah, the Shadow Demon looked like a very easy kill, but it's something very easy to forget that he has Drow Aura. Your supports love that. It's like, yeah, great, I can farm creeps. I can actually right click some cores. Every right click counts. Oh, it's old Lane Jerax trying to make the initiation to Skylar. Oh, we'll drop down the cogs. Has the backup of MNT. Jerax and Notel aren't going to go in any deeper. Spartan scouts out a fly in the river, and he knows that they're coming in. It's about to be six minutes. Can Spartan get the top one? Right, coming in onto Jarax, but he immediately silences Skylark like in return. Matter of moving down. He's going to gust up Jarax, and Jarax, he's good enough dead. And no tail. He could be in trouble as well. MNT a little low on the mana, though, so can't dive forward. Matter of sees if he could get a reach in. No tail will survive, Salva. Meanwhile, back towards the mid lane. Thug takes down Anna with the help of Spartan. And some sweet plays there from Abfin and bringing them ahead in the lead in terms of kills now. Three for two. And already proving to be a very, very close early game here between these two sides. Six and a half minutes in. I wonder how the Legion Commander is going to itemize. Like, Blink is... It's sometimes difficult to pull off just because of the cast point of Duel, like versus a very easy to uh, to escape hero like the Puck. Sometimes Shadow Blade is a uh, oh, top lane matter. I kind of caught out here. No tail, not messing around. Goes straight in with the Eclipse and takes him out. A little too far away from any sort of creep wave or backup. 
That ult will do the job. No tail is sitting at the top of the net worth at the moment, as we can see, but it's very close between these four cores. Not much in it at all. It's been a big game with Chicken in the top lane. They don't want to leave their like exposed core. I would say like Luna and Drought are still very weak at this point in the game, and they constantly have to rotate supports in and supports out. And if there isn't a support there, the other team will just sweep in and get that huge kill. Again, in the mid lane, Astral has been used, and that is going to be a bit of the opening for Thug to try and make a go. Goes for the old jukes out the smash there with a the face shift, jumps across to Anna. He's got two stacks of poison. The science as well, bringing the OD low. Anna, he should pop to this, and he will. They'll get the kill on the OD. They'll now look towards Jarrett, and they've got the setup as well. Spartan with the disruption. They'll take down the second at minimum. With a beautiful duo of plays there. This early game from the OD has just been a disaster after giving up that one kill to the Shadow Demon. Shadow Demon was level 5 at that point with level 3 Soul Catcher. 40% more damage on a generally tanky hero like an OD. Those raindrops aren't going to save you. Spawn making big things happen. With those plays on the verge of hitting 6, Demonic Purge is going to be thrown into the mix next time around those ganks come through. We'll see that replay again, and just some really nice coordination, and again, it's just Adfinim seeing that opening anytime Anna uses the Astral aggressively. Yeah, he's like, why am I taking so much damage? He waited out the Dream Coil, didn't want to get stunned by it, and Jirax wasn't able to connect on his boulder, and it will be an easy 2 for 0 for them. And the disruption not only just setting up, but also making sure that Fly couldn't get the Shadow Word heal onto Jirax. And Spartan. A relatively calm Spartan as well, but understandably <laughs> so, it's early days. He looks very intense. Oh. Intense, but he's not smashing anything up yet. <laughs> but still, I mean, at this stage of the game, I guess there's certainly both both teams have positives to take away from this early beginnings, but... Adfinum suddenly making the plays happen and they're not stopping yet. Oh, Mid lane Skylark with the hook shot immediately coming in onto Fly and indeed seven experience away from the six there. So no chance for Fly to offer anything in sorts of a, a turnaround and in fact S4 comes forward. Million dollar trading cost kind of hitting him back as uh, he always been caught out. The eclipse goes through, but the disruption was spotted. It may just save the no. There's Jerax with the timing, gets the smash and the silence out. So despite Spartan's best efforts, Thug will not be saved. Maybe next time, hovering around, maybe trying to get a kill on S4, but he will take the long way around to the left side as they avoid the Weaver. Very nice defensive disruption. Two ultimates for that. Uh, the Puck thought he could get the silence off, but it is only a level one silence, and the duel came out just in time. Have to respect the LC. If LC gets the duel on Puck, it's it, it's going to be a tough team fight for Adam because that's most of their AOE control in the fight. Now I'm going to have to be a little bit careful up on the stop lane now. Fly, he's come up here. He's got the backup of both Anna and S4 in the neighborhood. They want to use the rock. He does have the rock, yeah. Bad for them, they'll surely be aware of this. They'll see that, that Fly is level 6. S4 starting to come across, but it's all warded out. Vision of this area, Spartan immediately just holding him back. Mass TP is now coming through from Abfinim. They want to try and fight this demonic purge. Drops Jay straight down onto S4. He tries to purge it up, but that ain't gonna happen, son. With the press of the attack, he's out. Fly now in a bit of a sticky situation. Anna will try and save him for the time being with the Astral, but he's surrounded by Abfinim. They'll take down the Warlock. Anna's trying to TP out. He was oh, In fact, he stops. He looks towards Thug. He's trying to turn him around with the help of No Tail and Jarek. Thug falling low. Silence so Jarek should be able to find the book, and he will. But at the same time, it's 2-4-1 at the moment. Anna's falling incredibly low, heads down towards the south on the retreat. OG starting to turn this one around potentially. MNT is still about. No tail and Jerax. A little too high for them to finish off. Lucid beam down onto Spartan, but no more further chase down there from OG. They may have lost two, but they do manage to take down Thug in return. And they would have loved to have that Eclipse uh, there for that fight. The Puck was huddling towards the top side of the cliff, hoping for a defensive disruption from the Shadow Demon while he was silenced, but they were unable to get that off. And OG did not commit Rock to the fight, so they can perhaps take another fight on that top side of the map. But these skirmishes are not going their way. And OD is very far behind in net worth. It's okay if the Pucks, Pucks kind of held around that 3000 area, because he's not really meaning to scale. As long as the Drow gets farmed, he gets right-click damage in the meantime. And he's going to have his Veil soon. Absolutely, the Veil. Going to benefit multiple heroes on his side. Spartan's going to be very happy when that comes online as well. Extra damage out from the Shadow Demon. And the comparison at the moment. The kill participation, better for Thug. And indeed, the hero damage nearly double coming out from this puck. And it's obviously going to go even higher with that Veil being picked up around the corner. OG, trying for a smoke. They really want to make something happen here with the Chaotic Offering. 
and the Eclipse back online. S1's well got the duel. If they find a target, they'll almost certainly find a kill. Puck's not the target that they can go on. Legion Commander, no blink dagger. There's no way to stop him from just orbing, phasing. He's got the Invis jaunting. rune now. Oh, that's a big one. That's actually, I think, the, the best rune for the LC right now. As we can see, though, Adfin and sort of fortunate here in their movements. They're actually looking down towards the bottom. They know that Anna's alone. Anna's going to try for the TP out, but there's the vision. And Skylar just casually walks in, has the, the battery assault. And I don't think there's any escape here for this OG. There's no TPs coming through. OG just letting Anna die here in this situation. There's no way they can save him. Is that worth losing a T1 tower in your mid, though, OG? I, they might not even lose it. Adfin are already over, maybe looking for the defense. They have the dream call. They have all ultimates available. And Skylark with that play as well down bottom, he was very cool about it, didn't blow out a hook shot. He still got that ready for this mid lane fight. Can he find the lead in? Oh, he was so close to getting coiled under the tower. That would have been disastrous. Fly in a very good position to drop a rock. He's just a little bit to the north, hiding behind No-Tail. No, they've got to be careful how much they group up. Targeting low and thug! Gets the deny! And the back lane lines up at all the MNT. That's kind of taken the attention away from OG as they, they were drawn towards him. But Adfinum, you know, not only just getting that OD kill down on the bottom, and also getting the courier, denying the tier one, getting a, a nice little bit of a momentum here. OG potentially being being slightly thrown off their game in these early stages. Yeah, if they get it out maybe next time, they have to be especially careful of Roshan, uh, potentially coming out very soon. Weaver has a double minus armor build, Medallion of Courage, and Blightstone. He's been a little bit quiet this game, but that will allow them to set up on Roshan. You don't want to take the fight when Rock and Eclipse are up, at least not if they're uh, not pushing the top tower, but that is kind of, I think, what they're eyeing next. Getting, I don't even know who you put on, Drow, Ranger, or Puck, but either of them are both pretty good at this point. Offensive Smoke coming out from Advent. Let's see if they can catch out. OG have started to split back up a little bit around the map. I mean, they've obviously tried for two attempts with these big ultimates to make something happen. And they just haven't found the window. He's leaving no tail farming on his own down bottom. He doesn't want to shoot a rocket. If he shoots a rocket, he reveals his positioning. But at the same time, he does want to hook the Luna. find him anyway. No tail. Just outside of the night vision at the moment. Skylar won't spot him out. And with that rocket, they will. Already S4 and, and Jarek's being coiled up. But again, Adfinim holding back, not wanting to initiate a round here. So close to the tier 1, they know that there's going to be backup, and they know that OG still have these huge teamfight ultimates at their disposal. Yeah, that would have been like a three-man Fatal Bonds had they ran up there. And maybe next time feels very safe with that Sentry Ward in the mid lane, but still trying, trying to draw out the rock as long as possible. Still 15 minutes and have not seen one use of it. This has to be... Frustrating for OG. I mean, as we see that the team fights aren't working out, is it just a case of worth waiting for certain items? You know, S4 working towards that potential blink dagger. Is there something that could allow them to to change the, their fortune here in trying to make fights happen rather than just running down a lane? The blink dagger on the on S4 is probably the biggest one, but on top of that, OD just needs any sort of item on him. Like he is just dirt poor. He was neck and neck with the puck, but now puck is pulled ahead by a good thousand gold. Like OD needs items. Four staff, bail, anything, really. Midas, perhaps. In fact, Dad Finham looking towards Roshan. They've got very good warding around the Radiant Jungle entrance to it all. So Ad Finham are going to feel confident going in for the kill here. It's already falling down to half with the Drow and the Medallion from MNT. They're taking it down at an incredible pace. And it doesn't look like there's going to be any chance that OG can stop it. They'll send a creep across, but it's already too late. Rosh is down, and Madara has the Aegis in his hands. I really like the build from MNT for that, though. The double minus armor from the Medallion Blight and adding value from the Swarm. It just makes Roshan that much easier. And I think they chose to do it as soon as the Drow Ranger hit level 11, knowing that with that amount of agility, the timing that OG have to hit, especially with that T1 tower, is just minimal. OG desperately trying to make some sort of action happen here, going their way. Jarex smoked up, eyes onto Thug up top. Again, it's such a hard kill to get if he doesn't hit that combo, and he needs the follow-up damage. And it does have a DD under his hands at the moment. Ooh, they smoked. I don't think it was in Observer Ward range. They were hiding behind those two trees. Oh, and as for is, of course, in the jungle, just trying to finish off. Yeah, he's at 2,000 gold. That blink, it would be very painful if they lose his life at this stage of the game, but it looks like Skylark and Spartan have their, their sights set towards the mid lane. Hotel there at the moment towards the Ancients is going to start farming some of those up. 
Again, just not quite finding the vision here, Finn. So they'll continue to move up towards the top lane where Anna has found space and time to take down a tier one. They're expecting a smoke from OG, is, is what they're doing. And that wasn't actually an offensive smoke. They're patrolling around the high ground, waiting for it to pop. But now, LC does have his blink dagger. Same time, Puck has his. And Shadow Demon's positioning going to be crucial for the next fight. Earth Spirit, if he can get a silence on the Shadow Demon during the duel, that's also going to be pretty big. And of course, the Rock Drop and the Fatal Bonds, look for that. And Matter has just picked up a Shadow Blade as well. So add Finn with a multitude of ways to jump into the fights. And they are certainly looking for one now. As they move over to, to OG's half of the map, looking to, to take the tier two from down on the bottom lane. At the same time though, OG attempting their best to push out multiple lanes. You've got Ana pressuring up top. Bit of a movement from OG sweeping the jungle of Affinum, seeing if they find any stragglers, but the full force of Affinum is indeed all down here. So they take a tower of themselves, Affinum, and OG may be able to find a trade, but at the same time, Affinum, they look to potentially move on, and they could be on the verge of forcing OG to back up and fight them. It looks like they actually want to fight them up top. Mass TP's up towards the top lane, but OG have all but backed up, so you aren't going to see the, the team's butt heads as of yet, as both simply avoid each other. But Anfin will take the tower, and OG can't quite finish off the trade. No tail, perhaps just dragging a little bit high and trying to clean out that dire jungle. He does have an HOD creep, very useful in just adding his team's damage, as well as potentially blocking a hook shot. I think that's probably one of the biggest plays that you can make with, with an HOD creep in this game. And pushing high ground into Fatal Bonds, you just don't want to be in a position where multiple people are going to get destroyed by the Fatal Bonds. They can easily pick off the OD uh, with the Shadow Blade right now. And Spartan, he's been a lot more involved. Rock has just constantly been avoided by Ad Phenom. When's he going to drop it, Owen? That is the question. Coming up to 19 minutes in and still fly. Struggling to find the situation to offer. Offer his column to the fight. They don't have any smokes left on OG. The next one cools down in 1 minute and 40 seconds, but I don't know if they can wait that long before they choose to fight. And a Rocket Flare scouts out two of them. They know where Fly is. I think they might have seen him place a war too. He's coming through though, now into the mid lane. And then moving across, and has got the Sentry Ward down. Will pick up MNT and start to hammer into him, and in fact, jumping in with the duel, S4 will catch the bug out. And that Sentry Ward certainly paying off there. They get the kill, and they also get that tasty bonus damage for S4. And while up top, the fight's not over yet. It's Jarax hunting for Spartan. The pings will come out. They know he's there, but Spartan's already headed off to the side. He will get silenced up. No tail and Jarax surrounding him. Spartan know where he lives out of this one. He will be taken down. So OG not only finding that kill in the mid lane, Get a good kill up top, and that may allow them the momentum to finish off this tier 2 on the top lane. And not having to expend any big ultimates, that's exactly what OG needs to keep this momentum, keep on pushing with the Luna, keep building up net worth on that Outworld Devour. Puck hasn't really been able to get any picks, pick offs with his Blink Dagger yet. And nighttime has come, definitely giving OG the edge in this uh, next team fight, unless Puck can get a multiple man waning rift. It's going to be all about Thug's initiations indeed in this team fight. It's making sure OG don't have the chance to cast those ultimates. And is starting to work towards finishing off that Hurricane Pike. MNT, level 9 at this stage, and Anna himself. And then he has that Dragon Lance out and complete. 20 minutes in. It's been a, a bit of a troubling start for OG in terms of trying to make the fights happen. But as we've seen with that last bit of play, they're certainly able to find the pickoffs and have Finn McCord out of position. I don't know if they're going to be able to yeah, make the use of the Aegis, it just expires, so... The net worth actually has swung the way of OGs in the past few minutes, it's almost at par. That one pickoff on, maybe next time, actually gave, the, gave them a lot. As Ed Finn were not five strong to go up into the next team fight. So, Luna... And what is, is the build here? Is he going for I the Axe? I think he's going for Axe. He's going for the Agony. I mean, it talks to me about this, Ben. It, I, I guess it could also be a Scotty rush, but the it Axe and Luna Scotty, is yeah. actually very, very strong if they don't have BKBs, and I don't really think any of these heroes are going to build BKBs anytime soon. The thing does so much damage, it's just, it's risky because your physical damage might not scale as well. I mean, I, I guess what you, you've got Anna on the OD to scale up for the late game yeah. right-click, and you've also got S4. 
Yeah, they can just like dump it on S4. That's almost a guaranteed dual win as long as Shadow Demon doesn't get his ultimate off. It could also be just be a casual one if he feels like he needs more HP and just needs to survive. Mm -hmm. But it's a very unusual build. Right, so on the bottom lane here, Anna simply gonna Astral Thug and back away. MNC was in the neighborhood as well, but the two members of OG deciding to not take that fight. S4 walks into Observer Ward range. No, no, he's here. Madara closing the gap with the Shadow Blade, but immediately S4 blinks back. Madara jumps forward here with the Hurricane Bite, trying to finish him off. But with the Blade Mail and the Shadow Word, is it going to be enough to save him? The Rock, it will. They keep S4 alive. The question is if OG can find anything in return. The Ladder Lucid Beam onto Madara. Madara falling over the Dream Core from Thug. Holds back OG, and Madara will be allowed to escape there. Wow, one hit away, and the Clockwork will get dueled up at the end of the day. He did shoot that rocket uphill just so he could get, hopefully, what would have been that last hit on the Legion Commander, but the Shadow Word coming out just in time from the Warlock. That would have been devastating had the, had the Draw Ranger died at this point. But now you can tell that OG's team fight, they're much more comfortable grouping up now. And they found a, a bit of a crack, a bit of an opening, and they're ready, ready to abuse it. Forcing down the mid lane with the golem still up and healthy. Mid lane, S4, finding eyes on TMNT, but of course, Duel still on cooldown for the 14 seconds. But indeed, so far, this game won everything we've hoped it to be 9 for 9, 23 minutes in. Can still go both ways. And that's sneaking back into his own jungle, and in fact, yeah, they, they will spot out the Weaver. Garrix with a bit of a roll forward, maybe hoping to find the connection, but MNT juking it out, and at the moment, just taking, taking all the farm here from OG's jungle. And there it is, 23 minutes in, no tail, with this Aghanim Scepter I'm Luna actually, build in the I'm Grand Finals. I'm a big fan of the Ags. You like it? Yeah, good good timing as well. Yeah, it's really strong. It complements exactly what they need. They don't really need her to do that much uh, damage physically. I think just being able to drop that Eclipse onto the LC or just in an area is going to be really, really devastating. Like, I, I don't think they're going to see this coming, too. It's very difficult to itemize against, like pipe against that amount of magic damage. It's not something that you can switch to, like right now, 24 minutes into the game. You have to prepare for it. And it also will like alter the way that OG farm a little bit too, because he's not going to be as strong at taking ancients. Let's see if they find the opportunity to use it here in this mid lane push. Yeah, I think you just drop it on S4 as the rock comes out, and by the time you like base shift or. Shadow Blade, the oh. damage is going to be done. Trying to make an initiation here, and there we have it. The Eclipse drop down on the area of the ground, and it pummels through them. You get a beam, you get a beam, and everyone gets a beam. No tail, knocking down both of them. They're probably like, what the hell just yeah. happened? <laughs> right there. Team, he could be in trouble as well. Will be stunned up as Sentry's dropped as well. Jarex has eyes on him, and he's back, and he's going to get in the form of Anna and fly immediately with the time lapse. But Anna, he gets the Astral, setting him in place. Silence is there as well, and they'll find themselves a third. OG, incredible ingenuity there. That perfect positioning by the Eclipse there, right on that area, and Drow Ranger didn't really know what to do. She thought the, she was like looking for the Luna, like where? It's, I mean, there's no the escape. You, you don't see there, it's, uh, as we saw, you just melt. And BKBs, as you mentioned, draws on Afinum, they're not gonna want to build them anytime soon. I mean, but potentially do you feel that, that Matter is gonna be in a situation where he has to think about fitting it into his Drow build, or, or does he still have to avoid it? I think you just have to split push at this point. So yeah, the he drops this like right on top of where the puck is, and then she gets she gets stunned out by the boulder and just dies in one stun. And then Martin's trying to fog it up too, but he also just gets blown up. So like the the Luna beams appearing twice as fast is is no joke. It's very difficult to react to, and and of course it'll stop your blink daggers. And the one who kind of kind of can save himself is the puck. Yeah, that's the puck about was it. Very close to dying there. Yeah, I think you just have to split push at this point, though. Their team fight is unrivaled. Even when you get BKBs, it's it's still risky because they can duel you before you pop your BKB. They can drop the rock and then combo that with uh, Earth Spirit stun, and by that time you might already be dead from the Eclipse. So taking that risk on team fights is probably not something that they want to push at this point in the game. Just keep taking down Roshans, uh, keep avoiding the big Fatal Bonds rock combo, and. Try and get pickoffs with your Jarmander, who has the Shadow Blade. OG, ready to move around as a five man again. We'll smoke up. No words from Abfinim catching it out. We'll see if Abfinim are prepared. Spartan's in a perfect place to pop it. And he has the Observer Ward. So, yeah, yep. this is really smart position. Immediately just TPs out as soon as he senses danger. Skylark as well, walking himself away. And it tried to jump forward. Will get the Astral. They will manage to get the lock on this. S4 closes the gap. Oh, oh no! 
Skylark hook shots away and the drive-by stun holding S4 back, meaning no duel to hold him in place. Very, very smoothly done there by Skylark and, and just overall, as you said, Sparks positioning, meaning that gank was... I'm gonna find a kill. Bottom lane, Jarrett's trying to fight him against MNT. Will hold back the Weaver with a stun. Anna is there to back him up and with the sentry drop, they should find this kill. MNT trying to keep himself alive with the time. Let's try to get out of range of the sentry as well. He will manage to keep his, himself safe. Jarrett goes for the swing. Oh, and he shoots and he scores. Jarrett finds him in the tree line. So they will punish the Weaver despite MNT's best efforts to get outside of the range of that sentry. Ah, the original Earth Spirit player <laughs> showing off his skills right there. And I think OG are actually probably strong enough to walk inside the Roche Pit and not really uh, fear too much from Adpinum. If you're fighting from over oh, there, yeah. you're not going to have any creeps. And look at this, Ben. We are, we are going to see the tree here of S4. So come on. He gets greedy with the press the attack, too. Yeah. Press the attack a little bit, like right oh, as no, he, he go, comes Yeah, out. he goes for both. He tries yeah. to lay down the Q as well before the duel. He didn't think there was any way that he was going to escape. <laughs> but. I didn't expect the hook shot. Well, oh, okay. No, no. He didn't expect it either. He's trying to turn around and cast the ultimate of sorts. There will be a KOD offering, buying him time to get out of there. Now, No Tail turns. One loose and beam to the head, and they find the kill. Fly. There with the support to allow No Tail to escape and turn that adventure around. And they've not have done yet, OG. Rex moving forward, Spartan behind the tower. He'll actually disrupt himself, but S4 and Jerex, they're wrapping around. S4 really wants to find some sort of a duel. This time he'll get it. The two of them catching out Spartan. A nice plus 42 damage now in S4's bank. OG again, they're just going from kill to kill by those where they jump forward. They found the lockdown on ladder. They dropped down the Eclipse Aghanim's ultimate from No Tail. And there really is no escape from that spell, Ben. Yeah, the, the, this. I think uh, Adfinum fans are probably worried about like OG slowing the game down because that's where Adfinum kind of tend to make a little bit more mistakes. It's not the sort of game that they're used to. They want more like hectic, uh, just constant brawls, constant skirmishes, constant pushes and defense. But right now it's OG just moving around together and Adfinum are like kind of moving in there one at a time trying to pick up a hero or two. Adfinum are a hero down. They know there's no chaotic offering, they know there's no eclipse. They may go for a bit of a play here. Roshan falling low. Okay, that's the dream coil. The hook shot as well. Lots of forms of initiating. And OG playing fairly timid, in fact. They don't want to finish it off. They know that Abfinum have the, the favorable fight around here with the, the status of the ultimates in mind. It's so low. It's at like 25%. I mean, they, they can't leave it. They really can't. As soon as that drills back online, Madara and the boys will head immediately over to the pit. MNT is going to find no tail. No vision, of course, on these two cores at the moment, so MNT will be fine just scouting out the side of OG, giving the information that Abfinum need. And they'll know that OG, they're, they're out and away from the pit. Deso now picked up by MNT as well, so Abfinum can make incredibly short work of this. Matter of Hurricane Pikes into the pit. Coach jumps towards Woi, but Jarex is there. He's trying to look for Matter. He kind of shoots him out there on the vision edge of the pit. They've got the ward down. He shadow plays Matter. He gets himself away. The Sanders is a glimpse. Not enough to finish him off. S4 does find the bleak jewel onto the SD. Jarex finishes off Matter. So OG get the two kills that are crucial they'll go back in Adfinum still want to try and do anything about this they do have dream call hook shot of course are off off on cooldown Doug, will he make an attempt for a big old play he's going to jump he goes for the size but immediately jerax is there with the reactions the silence of the beat down og take the kill take the aegis and jerax he was ready for that puck play yeah, and they were ready for even that four staff in by the Drow Ranger. They had an observer ward on the high ground that I don't think Adfinum expected them to have, and that was a very high risk place. Four stepping into there, like maybe if you were smoked, it would have been much safer. But OG knew he was inside the pit. They had covered ground with sentries, and just once you take down a Drow Ranger, most of their damage is gone. And we're really starting to see OG coming to their own now. No tail leading by a fair margin on the overall net worth in comparison to Madara. And of course, as the start, as we talked about, Anna did struggle a little bit in the early game, but he's pretty much picked up all that he fell behind and now very much leading in comparison to the to the farm on Thug's Pup. As the recent fights have just favored OG each and every time, the shot calling just seeming to be a little bit better here in this game one, as they lead 19 to nine, 31 minutes in and have a favorable advantage in terms of money. They're getting much more use out of their gold too. Like Luna doesn't have to go for a PKB, neither does the OD, and they can both get covered by the Legion Commander. Legion Commander can stop the silence from the pug, and can just they can just turn around and man up with the press the attack. And at you know, they're forced to go 
defensively versus this massive Eclipse Bomb. No Tail's level 18 right now. Nice for i very close to being found out there by, by Adfin. They need to be able to pick off the Luna, or at least get a, a disruption on her. I think that's also one huge benefit of the, of the uh, Ags build this game. If you disrupt an, a Luna, it's not like she has Manta style, she doesn't have Butterfly. She's not going to be destroying your own team with the Glaives. It's all about the ultimate for, for Nota, as we've seen, but soon that situation will change with the amount of bang that he has. We'll be able to transition into that more more standard kind of build on the Luna, if he wishes to do so. Uh, OG coming across towards the mid, they'll force Adfinim away. And Adfinim indeed respecting the fact that Chaotic Offering, Eclipse is back online, and these are two ultimates that they do not want to tackle head on. Especially with Notel having that Aegis in his hands. Yeah, I wonder what Notel's gonna go for next, actually. If they want to push high ground, yeah, they do need more right-click from him, but he's kind of been itemizing against the Shadow Demon Disruption, so he might continue to do so. Like, I don't think the Link a Lincoln's is uh, like the worst choice in the world here. It will pr continuously prevent the disruption, and they don't actually have that many single target spells to pop it. Or you can just go Manta and or Butterfly, which is the most common. No tail. Looking at maybe next time. Maybe next time hasn't been able to have too much of an impact just because the supports haven't been alone they've always been with someone and the earth spirit like tries to buy enough time for his teammates if he goes onto him the warlock just drops a rock and you can't get solo picks as as the weaver this game and the one time he did try to split push he got astral into a duel which without a lincoln you're going to be dead again og now with their power they they're not looking for split push they're looking for full-on five-man push on this side thug to cut the creep wave and at the same time does have matter in the spot and forcing down the top they'll need to do something about this potentially very soon og making this push happen with the ages in no tails hands take down the tier two and it looks like they may move on for more and try and force out and back so puckett's gone for a lincoln's probably doesn't want to get dueled uh, and base racing versus luna Usually a terrible idea, but because she doesn't have that much right-click damage, it might not be the worst thing uh, for them. They just have to be able to BKB and TP out, which isn't a possibility versus the Warlock or the Legion Commander. And now OD has shown up in the lane. Two heroes are hiding in the trees, and he's looking for them. S4 blinks aggressively. In fact, he might catch Spartan before the TP is successful. Indeed, he's going to find him, but oh, he can't quite cast out again. He goes for the W before the straight-up duel. So missing the opportunity to hold back the Shadow Demon. And that you know, looks like they're grouping up for a smoke. The call has been made, especially with the DD on Thug. They are grouped up close to their secret shop. I think it's maybe a good time for them just because a couple of the members TP all the way to the left side of the map. But they have to group up around Spartan, maybe wanting to set up some Observer Wars to make sure that they aren't caught out yet. But now it's, now it's too late. OG have already regrouped as five as they huddle down the mid, and Luna has gotten a refresher. Axe Refresher is the build for no -tail this game. He is going all in on it. Yeah, that's really nasty, and Lu uh, SD does not counter this hero at all with this build. No matter if he finds Jarex, but immediately with the Ghost, they're actually going to drop the Dream Coil down here on this Earth Spirit. Time to, time to bounce. <laughs> uh, yeah, you you are, get out of you're there. not finding anything there. Sad Film indeed will just reset back up. He just has now fallen out. They need to push out the lanes and or use uh, Precision Aura to prevent this push. Like, Luna is incredibly strong. I'm pretty sure she could probably uh, team wipe all five of them. And imagine that with Fatal Bonds, that's oh going to be disgusting. Oh my goodness, and oh, here we go, Anna. He's just picked up the Hex and using it there to help out S4. But yet another successful dual win. And 20 to 9. It's, it's looking incredibly good for OG. And as you said, I mean, they could go high ground, just drop down two ults around the racks, and there's not a lot that Adfinim can do to, to try and fight underneath it in terms of defending their buildings. Thug might get hexed up here. They do need to use the four staff to pop the Lincolns. Oh, go roll forward. Jackson for the initial control. He's got the sound. He's got the stun. Dropping everything down. They'll shove him back. In come the balls of fury from Anna. Too many pickoffs on the side lanes. Adfinim. Trying to stall this game out, but they're just giving up way too many kills in the process. 
No tail out alone. This could be a big eclipse from them. If they try and engage, they're trying to wrap around from behind. This is a risky fight for Aphanim to take S4. Pops the BKB, looks towards Spartan, immediately locking down the Shadow Demon, winning another duel. Now he'll turn towards Madara, chasing down the Drow Ranger, who's trying to turn, trying to fight. He will go for the BKB TP out and will indeed get himself away successfully. But again, Aphanim to lose two and unable to fight into the power that is OG at this stage of the game. Yeah, OG have the perfect mix of team fight and anti split push to keep this train rolling. And No Tail, I think this is his peak with eggs and refresher, or they might as well use it while it's going to be at its strongest. Skylark doing his best to stop it with the power cogs, and maybe next time in the mid lane with a creep skip on the Weaver. But this train is coming. Here's the push in. Add Finn in five seconds, and they will have everyone back up. Quick fortification will force them away. And as you can see, MNT did skip the creep wave in that middle lane. Making it just that bit harder for OG to find the opening to, to go up to the high ground and indeed as we can see across the map that's something that Aphanim have been able to do just make sure that no creep wave is close enough to bring down that backdoor protection. The problem is OG is not under any timer. They still have a lot of room to grow on the OD who was initially poor and Luna still has you know one maybe two more item slots where she can just get bigger and bigger. And Legion Commander has been able to get a fair amount of pickoffs on the uh, supports, but comparing No Tail and Madara. And just the hero damage, as expected, just being doubled here by No Tail. With this item build, it's something that Adfin will have surely have not expected coming into this matchup. S4, Invis up. Will he be able to get the jump on Madara? He's sort of alone at the moment. Spartan and MNT around towards the south of him. They will scan him out so they know that he's there. Does also have Jarrett's close by, and in fact, Jarrett's running forward. Spartan maybe looks to try and do something here. In fact, he's just got to disrupt himself and hope for the best as S4 winning again. I mean, 110 stolen damage at 38 minutes. Very impressive indeed here from this Legion commander. Yep, and that has to be the call to push out the underlanes as quickly as possible. Those two heroes are the two best ones to pick off the side lane pushers, but you have to stop this five-man fight from happening. It's looking very, very scary for Alphenim. OG rising up to this grand finals and already in game one, showing us just the power that this team has behind them. An incredible opening performance. I mean, no tellers, we can see just 5-0-7. 330 CS, 20,000 net worth. It's been an impeccable performance from him, and he has that confidence. He can just go up to this tier one, tier three, getting very, very safe, getting the damage out, and knowing that at this point it's so hard for Adfinim to do anything about it. And they will de choose to defend. They do have the HOD creep inside of Roshan, but it is almost a maximum respawn. Madara looking for a gank, but with these hurricane pikes on the radiant side is very, very hard. Yeah, he's surrounded and yeah, no messing. CP's away. Can't be caught out in this in this area of the map at this stage of the game. They need that man alive. Jarrett, the gem now as well, so more map control will be going the way of OG. But what is, what is the best bet for, for Adfin now at this stage? Is it a case of waiting for OG to come for this this sort of a push? Or is it all about the split now for them? So that they just have to avoid OG's team fight? You have to avoid a team fight. I think the only hope of them winning a team fight is that if they burst down the Luna, but they have defensive astral, they have press the attack, and they have the rock to cover a track. So that is just way too many abilities to even hope that you can burst her down before the fight starts. Alternatively, you could burst down OD, but I don't think that's really a likely possibility either. Well, like, where's their bur burst coming from? There's no Dagon on the puck this game, which he's gone for in the past few. And here comes the push. OG ready to go in full force. They'll get the silence. The Hex now drops down onto a second. They'll find not just a Spartan. And Skylark as well. That's two out for Abfinum. And OG will be able to make short work here off this mid set of racks. Done. Just dropping down the veil. Nothing more as of yet. No Tail still has that double ultimate at his disposal. He doesn't even need to use it at this stage. It's just the threat of it that holds Abfinum back and allows OG to get those racks absolutely smashed in the mid lane. The way that Adfinum have gotten this far is by keeping it a relatively stable sort of game for them. And I think No Tail was really the player in this game that changed the state of play with his with his uh, scepter. It, it just destroyed that first fight and was just a do not pass sign. And 
any of these team fights. They know that he's hiding here. They have that ward down. They know he came down the lane. They're hunting from a Jarak. He'll find him. Eclipse drop down into the tree line. No tail and Jarak's making it happen. Shiva's got picked up by Anna as well. S4, is he going to get a pickup over here? Apparently thinking about it, but two of them nearby, knowing that there's potential backup from Spartan on the disrupt. He doesn't go for it. Now he's looking as he moves in. Jarak's gets the silence onto the puck. I thought, gets himself away here with the face, and there'll be a buyback from Madara. He realizes that his team desperately need him at this stage. And he looks to be trapped, but he should be able to, to get himself out, and indeed he does with the blink. But this is getting very close to, to being the final defense potentially from Abfinum. As OG have just played this game absolutely perfectly. They had a bit of a rocky start at the beginning, but ever since, no tails itemization, the Jarek's Earth Spirit play, the fact that S4 was able to find just pick off after pick off. Ooh, MNT. We'll start down the courier. That was, I believe, the, the Manta Star recipe from Luna. So, no tail isn't going to have that, but I don't think that's going to be the biggest of his worries. It's OG with the space to move into the pit. It will be scouted out. Have Finn spam pinging it, but there's no way that they can get over really. I mean, they've got Skylark in the neighborhood, but no one else is, is attending. I mean, he could try for something. And he is he is going to try for it, but he doesn't get it. Fly picks up the Aegis, Skylark loses his life. Nice try. Valiant attack. I mean, you, you have to go for these plays, I guess, when you're, you're kind of forced back at this stage of the game. Guess how long ago Adfinum's last kill was? I, uh, a, a couple of series. Oh, well, a series. Man. I mean, it's <laughs> it's really slowed down for them. OG have just not allowed any cracks to show. And now they're moving in for that second set of racks. Buyback from Sky. Like MNT will still be down for 35 seconds. Meanwhile, on the top lane, Matter has been caught out by S4, and he's down for 90 seconds. Jumping from Anna with a hex onto them all. Sanity's Eclipse is out, and they just tap it out. It's all too much for Adfinum here in game one. They've had some great wins recently over the last couple of days, but now meeting up against OG. This first match proving to be very, very easy for the side of OG. Adfinum, they're going to have to try something different in the rest of this series, Ben, because this game won the plan.